Imagine, someone tells you that you have to tear down your house. How would you feel? The common planning approach of local authorities is to hire consultants to draw up plans and inform the community of new developments. Power is placed in the hands of local authorities and residents have to comply. Now imagine a planning process in which ideas from the community are transformed into new layouts, a planning process which also involves local authority and professionals. Exactly this is what happened in Freedom Square in Khobabis. Khobabis is the capital of the Omaheke region in Namibia. Khobabis has 19,000 inhabitants. More than 9,000 of them live in informal settlements such as Freedom Square. These informal settlements just grow as people move into town. As a consequence, the plots are difficult to service and some are even difficult to access. When the municipality proposed relocation to another location, the community was against it. The way forward was a community-driven process of planning and upgrading the settlement. This was a pilot project, a first-time cooperation between the community, their local authority, in partnership with the Namibian government and the University of Science and Technology. As with any pilot, the lessons you learn are important, and this is what we found. You need to know your settlement. The whole process was based on a city-wide enumeration program. First, the community was informed about possibilities on how they could improve their living conditions. Then community members learned how to enumerate their settlement. They conducted household surveys, analyzed data, numbered houses, and mapped the settlement. They then brought this information back into the meetings. Discuss community needs. In meetings with stakeholders, the community members presented and discussed their findings and priorities. In the case of Freedom Square, the community identified access to water as the first priority, followed by the need for toilet facilities. For this discussion, it is best to create a platform at which the community can share insights and interact comfortably. This doesn't have to be complicated. In our case, we met under a tree. Build partnerships and learn from others. The enumerations already opened doors for involving multiple stakeholders at local, regional, national and even international levels to participate in the process. A key success factor in the Freedom Square project was a study tour to South Africa that the Shack Dwellers Federation and the Namibia Housing Action Group organized for members of the community and local authority. Here, they learned about opportunities and advantages of community-driven re-blocking and settlement upgrading as opposed to resettlement. It was decided that this could be a way forward for Freedom Square. Organize planning studios. The objective of planning studios is to identify boundaries and create the new layout of the settlement. In Freedom Square, the community, as well as students from the then Polytechnic of Namibia, were involved. The first four-day studio started off with the presentation of the enumeration information by community members. Community members teamed up with students. They identified access to services in and outside the blocks explaining circulation routes for pedestrians and vehicles. They mapped features of the settlement, such as water drainage, plot layouts, protected trees, dump sites, as well as available services, such as water taps and toilets. The second studio also included officials. The community presented proposed layout plans based on the findings of the site analysis. We found that the planning studios turned the whole atmosphere in the community around. During the enumeration feedback session, community members were very agitated and hesitant to discuss the data. During the planning studio, however, people developed new skills, such as working with a GPS and reading maps, and they started to care about the environment. New leadership emerged in the process. Ultimately, community members clearly turned into empowered people who want and can contribute towards their own development. Legitimize the planning. Based on their new layout, 
the community started to relocate to new plots. It is, of course, crucial that the process results not only in a new layout of the settlement, but that it also has positive legal consequences for the community. Based on the Flexible Land Tenure Act, the 1,050 households that reside according to their new layout can register their tenure right. To assist with registration, the Freedom Square community has implemented an international tool developed by the Global Land Tool Network and facilitated by UN Habitat. This social tenure domain model bridges the gap between formally registered land and land that is not registered or documented. In Freedom Square, this tool has enabled the community to produce occupation certificates, which basically show that the community members belong to their settlement. The process clearly showed that residents of informal settlements can play a crucial role in development processes. With enough knowledge and understanding of their settlement to contribute positively to change. For the students, the participatory planning process presented them with the opportunity to plan with the community and not for the community. Experiences like these do change the mindset of the town planners of the future. Or, in the words of a community member, you cannot plan for us without us. Instead, plan for us with us. This project was one of the most successful stories that we can tell as Hobalbas, a project that we regard as very important in the transformation of our informal settlements. We really want to compliment and express our gratitude uh, to the students of Polytech, to NAG, to the Shark Dwellers Federation and all that were involved, especially our community in how they really participated to craft this destination and for them today to be able to say, yes, we have done it ourselves and we are owning this project. So it was really a milestone for us as Khobabas.